Okay, in this short lesson, we're gonna use what we learned before, which is the pressure difference in the fluid that moves as a rigid body with linear motion. Okay, so here's the problem, which is basically an extension of our concepts that we talked about in the previous lesson. Okay, we got a fluid that's over here, and it's in a container, and the container must be open, okay? That is quite important because that would allow the pressure to equalize. If the container is closed, the analysis gets a bit difficult because there will be difference in the pressures that are acting on the, on the liquid, okay? The fuel, the fuel, the liquid in this case is called the fuel, okay? So this is the container and it's moving with the acceleration in the Y component in that direction. The width of the container is 1.5 feet, so we just label it half as 0.75 feet. On top of that, there's a transducer over there. Now, what's the transducer? Well, if you are in engineering or if you are in, in, in the engineering business, sometimes when you transport liquids, you cannot allow the liquid to go below the transducer or else it will sound an alarm. That is to say that if the liquid is volatile, something bad might happen. So basically, you got a trans, trans, transducer over there. Okay, the height Z one's over here and the, the height of the fuel is 0.5 feet, okay? The Y direction is in that, that, that way, the Z direction is in that way, and the container, I repeat again, is moving with the acceleration AY over there. Okay, so we've got the problem set up. First question, determine the equation of acceleration in the Y direction and the pressure of the tra transducer, at the transducer. Basically, we're looking for the pressure over there. I don't know, it could be because the, the transducer only can withstand a certain pressure, okay? And the maximum acceleration before warning. What happens, as I say again, if the level falls below the transducer, it's very important in certain problems. Okay, this problem, quite straightforward, but I think to get the hang of it, let's just solve it uh, in a systematic way. When we left off last time, we found out that dz dy is equals to negative ay gravity plus az. Okay, this is the equation that we find from the basic equation applying the del operator comparing uh, the vectors. And dz dy in the axis that we have defined is the gradient of this line over here, okay? So now, we want to find a relationship between ay. We've got ay over here, but pressure doesn't seem to be down here yet. Never mind, let's just deal with this equation and see whether we can reduce it somehow involving the depth z1. We anticipate in the future that the pressure at the transducer is going to be influenced by the height, right? Or at least the depth z1 over here. Because as you can see, as the liquid moves, the, as the container moves, the liquid is going to tilt this way and there will be a change in the depth. Hydrostatic distribution, so pressure varies linearly with the depth. Okay, what can we eliminate? We can eliminate AZ because there is no vertical component, there's no acceleration component in the vertical direction. So this simply reduces down to this. Okay, dy, we're just going to analyze it 0, um, 0 0.75 feet, okay, and divided by dz is going to be down here, Z1, which in this case we label as Z1, is going to be negative because we are going down in the reference point. Or another way to look at it is because the gradient is negative. Okay? We are moving at acceleration AY, so it's tilted this way, the gradient is now negative. It's equals to negative AY divided by G. Okay, doing the simple calculation, I'll just write down right away. Z1 is equal to 0 0.75 feet multiplied by AY divided by G. Okay, there we go. What does it tell us? As we move faster, or as the acceleration moves faster, dz is going to tilt downwards. Well, that's obvious if you uh, travel before and you hold a, a cup of water in your hand. So this is telling us that as we move faster or we accelerate faster, z1 is going to increase. Now, how are we going to insert the pressure in this equation? Let's just write this over here. z1 is equal to 0 0.75 feet multiplied by ay divided by g. How are we going to insert the equation of the pressure? Remember, we are relating acceleration in the y direction and pressure. We are same thing, hydrostatic distribution. What do we know about hydrostatic distribution? The pressure would vary linearly by the depth. Okay, so in this case, it's specific weight times h. Okay? Before I mention it, the fuel is given a designation specific gravity equals to 0 0.65. Bear in mind that specific gravity is very different from specific weight. Specific of gravity is the density of the liquid divided by the density of water. Okay, this is what specific gravity means. So let's take it from the equation over here. Height, in this case, we got to be careful a bit because remember we are dealing with the pressure change in the liquid. Now, as the liquid is in this direction, takes this orientation, what is height? Height is the distance from the transducer to the liquid. Okay, I hope we are aware of that. There is no point putting height as Z1 because Z1 is the empty space. It doesn't make sense. 
So we need to define height as the distance from the transducer to the point where the liquid touches the edge over there. So we got pressure. Okay, I'm gonna rewrite the specific weight of the liquid because the information is given is specific gravity. So specific weight is the density of the liquid divided by the density of water multiplied, sorry, sp the specific weight is the density of the liquid multiplied by gravity, correct? But that is not the information that we have. So we divide by the specific weight of Sorry, divide by the density of water multiplied by the density of water. So it will cancel out each other. See, this cancel out, so this is exactly the same as this. But the reason why I write it in this way, because this gives us the specific gravity, which is what we have. Gravity, specific gravity is here. G times the density of water can be easily calculated. Now, times by the height. Height is going to be the distance from here to here. That would mean that it would be 0 0.5 feet. Take away Z1. I hope you can see that. So this thing with Z1 gives us the height. I say again, because we're dealing with the change in pressure in the liquid, okay? So this is the equation that we have. And that will just simply be equivalent to, okay, let's just write one more step, 0 0.65 specific gravity times by 62.41 pounds per feet, negative negative three, okay, 0 0.5 feet, take away Z1, Z1 is over here, so it's take away 0 0.75 feet, Sorry, 0 0.5 feet, take away 0 0.75 feet, multiplied by the acceleration in the y direction, divided by gravity. Okay, and this is gonna be 20.3, take away 30.4. Sorry, A, acceleration in the y direction, divided by gravity. Okay? And what, does, what is the condition that we set? The condition that we set is that Z1 has to be less than or equal to 0 0.5 feet. Because we cannot allow this point to drop below the transducer. It wouldn't make sense because of our definition of H. On top of that, what we need to do is that we need to, okay, that is fine so far. Yes, the pressure is going to be given by pounds per feet squared, okay? Taking care of the units. So, first question is done. Acceleration is here in the y direction and pressure. Looking at it, roughly seeing it, I can say that as acceleration increases, we're going to subtract a bigger number, so the pressure is going to decrease. Okay? That is fine. Now, the second part, acceleration, maximum acceleration before warning. Well, what happens well, when there's a warning, what is actually happening? Z1 is going to drop below the transducer. As we move faster, because Z1 is going to be defined by this, so as we move faster or we, we accelerate faster, Z1 is going to increase. Now, if Z1 drops below the transducer, which is marked by 0 0.5 feet, the, uh, the warning would sound. So we need the maximum acceleration, this limiting value over there. But that shouldn't be a problem because if you just know simple arithmetic, we will just put 0 0.5 into Z1 equals to 0 0.75 multiplied by A, Y, max, divided by G. Simple enough. And that will turn out to A, Y, max is equal to 21.5 feet per second squared. We're dealing with the feet, uh, units as feet, so let's just be consistent. Okay, so this is A max over here. Simple enough, get the equation of Z1, substitute the critical value, in this case 0 0.5, to get the acceleration in the y direction max. Now, I know the problem has already been solved, but I just want to introduce one last concept over here. This is a proof that the pressure in this direction, okay, is not the same. Remember in the previous discussion, we talked about the lines of constant pressure and we found out that lines of constant pressure happens to be the lines over here like so, okay? Moving in that direction, the slant direction. Now, we can use an equation to very easily show that this is not the same. The pressure in this direction is not the same. And that would be the change, the partial P, partial Y equation, which I'll write it down again. Partial P, partial Y, or shall I say negative partial P, partial Y is equals to the density a y acceleration in the y direction okay and if the fluid is moving in that direction in the y in the y direction there's going to be an acceleration right this acceleration times the density does not equals to zero so if this does not equal to zero it says to say it suffices to say that change in p from a change in y does not equal to zero so if we move a point in liquid in the y direction because that's what we define it as the change in pressure there will be a change in pressure so it will change. Yeah, the pressure will change, and therefore I can say that in this y direction, the pressure is not equal. Basically, using the equation, the basic equation, the, the partial p partial y.
partial pressure due to a change in the y direction. Okay, simple problem solving a few, sorry, few moving in a container. And then go. I should have labeled it a few in a moving container, but I hope you get the gist of it. Okay, recap again. Just use the basic equation that we have, which is dz dy, dz dy is equals to the acceleration y component negative gravity plus az. Then deduce whatever information you need. Okay, and watching of the critical value. Okay, so simple enough.